Hi everybody, Jeremy Siskin here. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as the Jazz Piano Fundamental series, which has three fantastic books, each better than the last. I guess that's debatable, but you know, I think it's good salesmanship. Today, I wanna show you a game that I play um, in order to broaden my sense of what's possible at the piano. I think as jazz pianists, we can get kind of stuck in these paradigms of like left hand rootless voicings, right hand melody, or you know, left hand shells, right hand melody, or left hand stride, right hand melody, or maybe block chords, right, or shearing voicings, or whatever it is, right? We have these paradigms we work we work on in the jazz tradition, and they're fantastic, and I, I you know care, cover them all in my jazz piano fundamentals, every single one. Um, but you know, the history of piano and the possibilities of the piano expand way past um, those kind of jazz paradigms. So what I want to talk about today is some ways that you can get inspired to use the piano in some different ways. And this is especially useful in a couple of scenarios. One, if you're coming up with an arrangement, you know, you want to come up with a creative piano arrangement. And I've really like literally used this to come up with um, arrangements. And secondly, if you're playing some kind of a free introduction to a tune, or if you're like really playing free jazz um, and you want to, you know, not just play like <laughs> closed position voicings or something very traditional, right? If you're playing in that more creative open setting, you want to play uh, very differently. So the way that this game works is I'm, I've picked a piece of classical music and I picked Debussy uh, because Debussy just has such rich pianism in it. Uh, so we're going to look at Reflet dans l'eau from uh, Image, book one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a key. I'm not even gonna work on a tune, um, but I'm gonna choose like a mode. I'm gonna do C Dorian, nice friendly mode. And I'm gonna look at some different parts of Reflet dans l'eau. And I'm gonna try to play the basic essence of the pianism using C Dorian, using notes from C Dorian. So I'm not gonna try to play any of the notes but I'm going to be trying to play the kind of pianistic texture. I'm going to try to chunk it out almost in the same way that Debussy is. What an ugly way to say that. So let me give you some examples. Hopefully this will make more and more sense as I give you examples. So here's the first um, two measures. So what I'm seeing here is a low fifth. I'm seeing uh, three note chords kind of cascading on, uh, on the top. And then I'm seeing these you know, what, I don't know if they're melody notes exactly, um, but they're obviously strong notes because they have that tenuto sign. So I'm gonna, um, just in case you're wondering what this actually sounds like, um, this sound, it almost doesn't matter, but the original sounds like uh, this. I'm trying to, gonna try to do better not to have my microphone right in my face, but it might be a, a game of chicken here. So the original sounds. So I'm going to pretend that I've never learned this piece, but I'm going to use notes from C minor and try to like C Dorian and try to simulate. Okay, so there's a little bit of C Dorian. Let's, let's try a different version. And then I could abstract it even more. So I'm really playing literally the rhythm that's written here. But what if I just thought more generally? Okay, low fifth, mid range, kind of single notes in the left hand, and um, and uh, and then three note chords in the right. It could be. Okay, so it could be an inspiration for an arrangement of something like that, right? So, you know, I don't have to play it exactly rhythmically like that. I could start asking myself, what if questions? What if this was in 6-8, you know, and I was going... Or 
what if there were two left hand notes uh, for every beat? So you could use that sort of thing as an inspiration. Let's see, where else should I try to grab something from? Okay, how about these two bars? You don't always have to pick two bars, but these just seem like they go well together. So what do we have here? We have octaves. At the, in the first bar, we have octaves. Actually, I think, are they ascending by half step? I think they are. And then we have three note chords. Um, and actually, it's kind of cool. Any jazz musician will recognize that these are actually uh, like type A-B voices. You always have the third and the seventh, plus like the root or the thirteenth on top. And then I have a single note cascade. So uh, here's how the original actually sounds. Really beautiful, actually. So what if I try to do something similar using C Dorian? So I'm not going to go up by half steps because that's not going to be within C Dorian. I'm, I'm going to try to stay within the mode. So let's see. necessarily think to do that and um, you know we could again play around with the rhythm what if it's just three chords you know that could change or it could be throwing out some ideas. How about, let's see, what's happening over here? Let's take just this single bar. What an interesting bar. Already actually kind of in C Dorian, <laughs> just with a D on the bottom. So let's see, this is a little complicated. So it starts with a rolled three note chord on the bottom. And the right hand, is holding on top, and the left hand is kind of like crossing over in order to fill in the last part. So this is actually in my wheelhouse. I love perpetual motion stuff, and this is a good perpetual motion. It's right, 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 left, right, 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 left. So. Could be fewer notes, it could be practicing this three 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 one three 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 one you know this is kind of a nice um, like flourish potentially <laughs> to figure out how could I move that quickly across the piano all right and let's get to the second page because the second page gets a little bit more hairy let's look at this measure this is something very unusual in a jazz setting right um, so what do we have here well we can see that we have contrary motion. You see that the right hand starts 8VA, and it's just going downwards, and the left hand is coming upwards. And the right hand has octaves with a note, a fourth, 
either below the top note of the octave or above the bottom note. Kind of seems to shift. There's like really bell tone kind of octaves, and then the left hand just has octaves going in the opposite direction. So that's weird. So can I do that in C Dorian? Could be an interesting way to start a free introduction. So uh, key sig let me play this example first. Good. I'm pretty sure um, that this is also focused on a pentatonic scale. Which gives it that kind of bell-like sound in part. So I could do this in C Dorian. minor pentatonic scale. I wonder what happens if I do it faster. <laughs> I can't do it smooth. <laughs> I like it better slower. It's, it's kind of pensive. in the background. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and actually, you know, before we leave that idea, look at what happens after. <laughs> it's kind of really extreme to the piano. So let's combine it in C Dorian. Kind of fun. All right, and then lastly, oh, let's do this. This is cool. Right, so here's another great perpetual motion texture, one in the left, and you can see, again, the left hand has these tenudos, so that's probably gonna be like a melody, and then there's four in the right, and it's going up three, sorry, not four, five in the right, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so here it's using the octatonic scale, but I could do it in C Dorian. Um. So now what I'm gonna do for you I'm gonna try to do for you, is I'm gonna take these elements that we worked on and I'm gonna put them together into a free introduction. So I, I'm gonna try to do this somewhat spontaneously, but let's, let's mark, I'm gonna do this one first. I don't know how well you can see. Um, so I'm gonna start with those octaves on the outside. Then I'm gonna go to the one that we just talked about. da ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da and then I'll go over to the first page. I'm gonna to try to do something with uh, something third here. Then I'll do something uh, with those ascending octaves. Fourth, I guess I'm mostly just going in reverse order. Um, and then sure, I'll try this opening thing fifth. All right, wish me luck. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Um, I've never tried this before, but let's see, you know, so let's pretend someone asked me to play an open introduction on Softly as a Morning Sunrise, great C minor two. Okay. So I'm gonna stay mostly around C minor.
you know, that actually I think held together relatively well as an introduction. And it's just me stealing these pianistic things from Debussy. I'm not really doing anything interesting harmonically. Maybe I used a little bit of uh, the melodic minor in addition to the Dorian mode, but I, I really didn't do anything too interesting harmonically. And I think I came up with a pretty cool uh, introduction. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like that, I do talk about a lot how to do that in playing solo jazz piano, which by the way, this is a second edition. If you only have the first edition, there's a lot more audio visual content uh, to check out in the new edition. So um, why don't you comment with reflections because uh, this was from Reflections in the Water, the WC piece, if you enjoyed this video. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Take care.